All right, give me a spot. You know my motto, safety first. They could be dangerous. I think we should call animal control. Animal control? <laughs> to be safe. Don't worry. Just... I got this. It's a new motto. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. Sheriff Dave Phelan, a weekly program here on LSN Television, our local uh, cable affiliate. And also, we're carried by a number of our radio stations throughout Fairfield County and beyond. Do appreciate you, the viewers and listeners that join us each and every week. And uh, we're back with uh, kind of a new set. We started this last week and uh, do appreciate uh, Lieutenant Tim Vorse taking some time to kind of put this together. And uh, this is also going to be part of our display at the uh, Fairfield County Fair. We're going to have this actually in our tent with some other banners sharing some things that are uh, important to us and within the Sheriff's Office. Back by popular demand is uh, Lieutenant Alex Late with the Fairfield County Sheriff's Office. He is in charge of our patrol division, which is uh, just about half of our, our Sheriff's Office, maybe not quite, but has a lot of responsibility on seeing the day-to-day -day operations of the Sheriff's Office, supervising the deputies that you see on patrol, and uh, lots going on. Yeah, yeah, we've been busy this summer. Yeah, it's been a busy summer and, mm -hmm. and, and lots of things going on. Now, one of the things I know that you've been doing along with uh, Chief Perigo and some other administrators within the Sheriff's Office, you've been visiting other sheriff's offices throughout central Ohio. Tell us a little bit about that and, and why are you doing that? Well, the chief deputy he kind of spearheaded this, this plan to go around and observe operations at uh, other county sheriff's offices. Uh, part of the reason we're doing it is to look at uh, some of the uh, detention facilities that they have. To, to, you know, we're getting ready to hopefully build a new detention facility of our own, so uh, we're trying to get some ideas on, on that. and. Uh, some ideas on radios and communications and personnel and uh, we're just kind of sitting back and observing and they're telling us how they do business and we appreciate them uh, ha having us for a visit. Have, have you, do you see a lot of uh, differences between the way sheriff's offices operate? Typically uh, there's, there's not a lot of difference th of the ones that I've seen so far and the ones that I've experienced over the years. Um, a lot of times there'll be, the, the major differences are uh, their budgets, um, their, and that would directly reflect on the amount of personnel. Uh, that typically goes hand in hand with their populations. Um, but for the most part, the structure is pretty much the same, pretty consistent. There may be some differences in the ranking structure for their administrative officers, and uh, other than that, it's pretty much the same. Yeah, I, I do think the budget plays an important part. We have to operate different than Franklin County because Franklin County is a, a large metropolitan area with, uh, you know, at any given time a million people. Fairfield County, we're probably about 150,000 people. Yep. And uh, I was struck um, a few months ago, I was actually in MacArthur and I stopped at the sheriff's office there and they had one deputy on duty mm -hmm. during that time and uh, they had the dispatcher and the dispatcher also took care of people that came into the lobby. She did the dispatching, she took the phone calls and uh, many times those, those in those smaller jurisdictions the, there can, maybe, there's only one deputy for right. the entire county and they're going on domestic calls, they're going on fights, right. they're going on uh, robberies in progress mm -hmm. and, and what a dangerous job that is when it, you think about no backup. Yeah, Very it, close. It, it's uh, kind of eye-opening when you go to a smaller jurisdiction, smaller department or office. Uh, uh, well, you know, we've been to a couple where I've come back and I'm like, wow, I feel pretty good about right. about, about the resources that we have available to us. But uh, it's um, 
it's it's pretty uh, it's pretty enlightening when you go in there and you see, and I've done this myself actually, but you see a, a guy taking a phone call, entering the information for the call into the computer system, going out, getting the keys, getting in the car, going on the call, handling the call, and then coming back and typing in whatever disposition for that call. Right. And I've done that, you know, at times on when I was the supervisor on second shift, uh, we'd get really busy, and I would help out in the radio room. Well, I'd take the information for the call, enter it in there, and then discover that uh, I don't have anybody to send on the call. So I would go on the call and do the same kind of thing. So it's a, it's a good learning tool to, to, to do that. A few weeks ago, uh, Fairfield Medical actually donated 12 of the AEDs or the portable defibrillators mm -hmm. uh, to the sheriff's office. Tell us, first of all, what, what that is, and uh, secondly, is, is how is that going to be utilized within the sheriff's office and the training and things like that? Um, yeah, we were fortunate enough to, as, uh, actually a total of 13 okay, automatic okay. emergency defibrillators that were donated to us, and, um, and we appreciate that very much. It gives us the ability to uh, do what needs to be done in the first responder capacity in the event of, an, a, medical, of a medical emergency. Uh, these units are a little bit different than they have been in the past. In the past, um, you would uh, have, a, have a victim there make your call to 911, which is the proper procedure for deploying this unit. Um, you, know, you want to get emergency services going your way. Uh, you would open the unit up. Um, it would talk to you and tell you what to do. Uh, you put the pads on the victim's body. And it would tell you shock is advised or shock is not advised. And if it was advised, you would make sure that everybody was clear of the victim and push the button. The new ones that we have, you don't have to do that. It does everything. I mean, you just put the patches on them, the pads on them, and, and it basically takes over. And it gives you a warning that it is going to administer a shock or it will tell you that it's not. Um, there have been instances here in the county where these, these units have saved people's lives. Uh, it's a valuable tool for us to have. Uh, the plan is is that in each one of our main buildings at our annex um, and at our substations to have have these uh, units available at the at those locations. Every one of our frontline cars will also have one of those units able to be deployed from the from the patrol vehicle. So. Many times, law enforcement is the first responder even though you may need an ambulance a fire truck because we are out in the community all the time many times we are going to be the first one and you have someone that's in cardiac arrest when you have someone that's having a heart attack how important those first few minutes are during during any crisis like that. yeah yeah this will be a valuable tool in that event there's no doubt about that we'll be able to Hopefully, uh, if, if we save one person's life with it, it's a worthwhile thing. Yeah, absolutely. The amount of training that, that we had to, to, to um, go through was, uh, it, it was pretty uh, taxing to get everybody trained real quick and get them through this, but it all worked out. And everybody's been certified uh, in, in the new, new CPR techniques as well as with the AEDs. Now, for a number of years, you've been involved in our SWAT team. Yes. And, uh, what uh, what does it take to become a SWAT SWAT officer? What type of training? What type of physical uh, ability? What type of shooting ability do you need to become a part of a SWAT team with the sheriff's office? Well, our uh, we have a multifaceted selection process. Um, it typically starts with um, the a person being in good standing in the sheriff's office, no disciplinary issues, no sick issues, no sick leave use issues, things of that nature. Um, we, we will have a tryout day. Uh, the last one that we troll, uh, working at the courthouse, whatever that may be, and, and then as the scheduling and things permit, if there is an issue or an incident that we need to uh, call them out on, we have a, a, a paging system that notifies everybody. It calls their their home phone, their cell phone. It sends them a text. It sends them an email, all with one phone call. And and those that are able respond, and those that can't, uh, wish they could. A lot of times. Now, a few years ago, you actually came here to Fairfield Christian Academy, and you had your SWAT uniform on, right? right. Yeah, I had all my gear and uh, did a little Q and A with the kids in different classes, and uh, I think that, that it was. I enjoyed it, so I hope they did too. Well, with our new set here, I think maybe on one of the future shows we'll have to do that. I was, as you yeah. were t talking, 
with this new set we have, it's bigger than it, than it was in the past. There's a lot of different things we could probably do, even some maybe self-defense training. I think you've been involved in a little bit of that in the past. Oh, yeah, yeah I've done several of those. Uh, uh, honestly, I'm kind of getting along in, uh, in uh, my career, and I have some other people that typically will go out and uh, help out with that, and uh, they do a really good job also. So uh, somebody be willing to, I'm sure. What are the type of instances where SWAT is activated or what are some of the duties and I think a lot of times people think it's the barricaded person but but SWAT does a lot of different things. Yeah they? we will uh, we will do some um, high-risk arrest warrants uh, typically the majority of things that, that we become involved in that's probably the most frequent thing that will serve we do a, a risk assessment on any warrant that uh, that we're asked to serve um, and if that that warrant qualifies by a point scale, then uh, it automatically is relegated to the tactical team or the SWAT team to take care of. Uh, we do dignitary protection uh, at different times. All all the deputies that are assigned to the SWAT team have had dignitary protection training. Uh, it's one of the segments that we do in our training program. Um, I I feel that we have probably one of the best training programs of uh, any team. In, uh, south of uh, Columbus, I don't think there's any any unit out there that's as good as ours. And I know even when uh, Romney came to town, you guys were part of that along with the uh, Lancaster SWAT team, right? Right. Yeah, it was a joint endeavor between our two teams and and the Secret Service. And uh, we had uh, Joe Biden also came to town. And we were involved in that, and we incorporated Lancaster into that at, at the uh, Fairfield Union High School. So. We try to work together and, and utilize all our resources. Lots of good things. I, I'm going to take you up on coming back one of these days and with, with all your gear because I think the, the viewers yeah. and listeners would, would find that rather interesting. Yeah, yeah. I've done it on several occasions. So how long have you been a part of the SWAT team? Since uh, 1999. Wow, long time. Yeah. So you're probably the senior guy there, aren't you? Or, uh, there's a couple that have been, been doing it longer than I have. Yeah. 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 Any, so. any close calls? Or is it all going pretty well? It's all going pretty well. There have been yeah. a couple times where you know it could have kind of went either way, and yeah. uh, as far as uh, deploying the firearm went. But uh, fortunately, I've never had to get involved in that. We'll have you back soon. Last two weeks uh, with this special guest, uh, Lieutenant Alex Lake, the uh, patrol commander with the Fairfield County Sheriff's Office, and the third highest ranking officer within the Sheriff's Office today. So, uh, so you've done a terrific. Uh, Perfect job. Had a great career. It's fun, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. yeah. The clock on the wall says we're just about out of time. Do appreciate, again, the folks here and the students here at Fairfield Christian Academy that put this program together each and every week. And certainly we've got a new set, a new studio. So we're really looking forward to the weeks and months ahead as we're going to bring more and more guests from within the Sheriff's Office community leaders together to talk about things that are important to Fairfield County. Clock on the wall says we're out of time. Until next week, same time, same place. If you're out there driving, buckle up. God bless, and we'll see you right here next week.